Well, good morning, guys. It is Saturday, and we have a pretty nice weekend ahead of us here in the Pacific Northwest. I've got a ton of milling to do, but first, I'm going to spend this weekend doing a bunch of maintenance on my sawmill. I mentioned in my last video that I just broke 200 hours on my mill, and while I've been doing maintenance during those 200 hours, I thought I'd take a day or two and make a video about all of the maintenance that uh, is involved with one of these sawmills. First order of business is get this thing dug out of the sawdust and the tree bark that it's buried in. Give it a bath, get it into my shop, and I'm gonna go through the maintenance procedures top to bottom on the entire sawmill. Now when you buy a Woodmiser sawmill, you get one of these. They also give you one of these. This is a three ring binder full of everything you could ever need to know about your sawmill. And it also comes with a couple of tools inside here that I see people ask all the time, what the heck is this for and how do you use it? So I'm gonna go through all of this right now. Now we're gonna get started on top with the air filter. This is something I check probably every few hours of running to see how much sawdust is built up in the pre-filter. It hasn't been too long since the last time I checked it, so well I'm gonna take off this pre-filter, which is just a foam cover. I'm gonna take this outside and, and blow it out really good. Now before the pre-filter goes on, the manual recommends washing this with warm water and detergent, and then once it dries, soaking it with fresh engine oil before replacing it. All right, so while this is drying out in the sun, I'm going to change the engine oil, and I'm gonna move the saw head to the tongue of the trailer so I have easier access to everything I need to get to. Now something I'm noticing more and more on engines are these oil drain tubes that make it a heck of a lot easier to drain the oil and not get it all over everything. It's a great idea. Well, it's on plenty tight. Mm. 
The oil filter is on the other side of the engine. I'm going to throw some paper towels underneath to catch any oil that might spill out. Which is a lot. So spin it on, once you make contact, give it two thirds of a turn roughly, snug it up. That's all it needs. Now I've put one quart of oil in. Take my word for it, it's right there. So I'm gonna add half a quart and see where that gets us. The manual says to fill the oil filter before you install it, but that doesn't make any sense because you just end up dumping it all over the sawmill. So I've put it on dry. Once we get the oil full, I'll fire it up, let it run for a second so that it can circulate the oil, get it through the oil filter shut it off, check the oil again, and top it off as needed to add what the oil filter took. Okay, that's right at the full mark. So it's safe to start it. give that oil a second to drain down and then we'll check it again. In the meantime, I'm going to put a little oil in my pre-filter and get it back on. Don't need this thing soaking wet, so we'll squeeze out the excess into this paper towel. People ask all the time about the belts on the blade wheels. They see the gap and they ask, is this, is this how this is supposed to be? This seems awfully loose. This is how it is supposed to be. Now, Woodmiser recommends rotating these belts back and forth between the drive pulley, which is this side on the motor, and the driven pulley, which is on the other side. And to do that, you just pull it out of the groove on the belt. It's super simple. Check them for wear, for cracks on the V. I replaced these not too long ago and I just swapped them. So I will just put this back on. Just like that. While the blade is off, it's easy to check your bearings by pulling back on the brake a little bit, giving it a spin and making sure that everything spins relatively freely and you don't hear any Captain Crunch coming out of the bearings. The other side, uh, you do not have to release the brake. It's free spinning, super easy to do. You can also check the bearings on your idler pulley by pulling up on the drive belt and just giving it a little spin. Again, it spins freely. You don't hear any binding up or any crunching in the bearings, so that's good. Now, another one that gets asked all the time is, what is this? This came with my sawmill. I don't know what it is. How does it work? And this is a spring-loaded tension gauge, and this is for adjusting your drive belt on the sawmill. If you see a bunch of cracks on your drive belt on the inside, you're gonna wanna replace it. I kept my old one for a spare, but uh, this one doesn't have very many hours on it. It's in good shape. But let's go ahead and check the tension. Now the first thing you're gonna do is engage the belt. 
Now on top of the blade cover, there is a plate normally that would be removed with two bolts, but I lost mine a while back and uh, I've never replaced it. We're gonna use this opening right here with our plunger tool to set our belt tension. Now the specs for my LT35 with a gas engine are for 7 16 of an inch deflection at 14 pounds. So how we set this up, we're gonna take the O-ring that's on the exterior housing that shows you centimeters on one side, inches on the other. We're gonna place this on the belt through this hole. We're gonna set this O-ring so that it's flush with the surface of the housing. So we're gonna slide it up 7 16 of an inch. And then our plunger, we're gonna set at 14 pounds. So when I push down on this plunger and my O-ring touches the top, I know that's 14 pounds of pressure. This O-ring should be flush with the top of the housing. Now when you engage the blade, you pull down on this lever that revs up the engine and it also raises your idler pulley so that your belt engages with the drive pulley. If you found that your belt tension was too soft, you would simply loosen the nut on top and spin the nut on the bottom so that you raise this assembly and that will increase your belt tension. Sometimes it could take a couple of adjustments to make sure that you've got it just right, but it's a pretty simple process. While your blade's off, it's also a great time to check your blade guide wheels, make sure that they're spinning. Looks like this one's a little bit loose. I'm gonna put a wrench on it real quick. That's better. Now one last thing to check on the maintenance side is the sag of the power feed chain. With the saw head all the way at the front of the mill, you should measure seven to eight inches from the top of this rail to the top of your chain. Now if you found that you need to adjust this, the tensioner is at the back of the mill. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put a blade on and close it up and we'll get into the lubrication portion. Well now so far we have washed the sawmill, we have serviced the engine, we've gone through the saw head and made sure that our pulleys and belts were good, our tension's correct, and all the moving parts are working as they should. We've also checked the tension on our power feed chain to make sure it was good. Now it's time to lubricate all the moving parts. We're gonna start right here with the saw head. Now underneath this plate is a piece of felt that rides on top of the guide rail and when that is soaked with oil, that helps lubricate that top rail and keep it nice and rust free and clean. We need to pop this cover off, which is just a couple of wing nuts, one on each end. We'll clean out the sawdust that's probably built up in that felt and then we'll soak it with some automatic transmission fluid. Oh yeah, that is built up with some pretty crusty looking sawdust. I'm gonna take this outside with a light wire brush and scrape out all this crusty sawdust. All right, well that looks quite a bit better. Put some uh, automatic transmission fluid in that. Now you don't need to buy any expensive oil, I just picked up the cheapest one that they had. And we'll soak that in real good.
once you get it snug, I like to just push down a little bit, make sure it's making good contact, and then cinch it up. Now we're gonna lubricate the saw head elevator chain with automatic transmission fluid, which is what Woodmiser recommends. Sawdust will stick to it a little bit, but not like uh, a thicker oil, so the sawdust will typically fall off under its own weight. It's also very easy to clean. Now I've seen and tried several different ways of applying this oil. I've dumped it out of the bottle onto the chain. I've seen guys use, uh, put it in a spray bottle and spray, but it seems like it gets everywhere when you do that. The idea that I've come up with that I like the best is an old sriracha bottle. You can close off the lid, you can precisely apply it to the chain and you don't get the oil all over everything like you do with a spray bottle or trying to just dump it out of an open bottle. Now I've counted 19 grease fittings on my mill. Yours may have more or less depending on the model or how it's configured. You don't need an electric grease gun. A hand pump grease gun works just fine. Doesn't take a whole lot of grease either. All right, well I think that's about got it. Well guys, that pretty much covers the basic maintenance of the sawmill. Everything here is pretty simple. If there was something more technical that you were looking for that you didn't find in this video, there are a lot more complicated procedures for adjusting the bed or the saw head that fall more under the troubleshooting. You're solving a problem where you're not cutting square or you're cutting wavy or you have some sort of issue with the deck or the saw head itself. I do plan to make follow-up videos showing those more complicated processes as they come up with my mill. So far I've been pretty lucky and I haven't had to do any major adjustments. They say you should do a complete alignment of the head and bed at 1500 hours. I'm way off of that. But in the future, if I have minor adjustments to make, I'll make a video and I'll show the troubleshooting process and how to fix it. Well, I hope this helps guys. I appreciate you taking the time to check it out. I've got some pretty good sawmill projects coming up. I've got some black walnut, some cedar, and some more Douglas fir for my shop. Stick around guys, we'll see you real soon.